Thank you very much for a wonderful panel. And uh, stay seated. We have very, very exciting. Take a stretch. That's good. Uh, so you don't have to stay seated, but stay in your seat because uh, we have on the line the uh, United Nations Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, who is uh, the leader of uh, this effort. Of course, uh, she and Secretary General Antonio Guterres are the uh, partners uh, in the UN leadership and in the UN system. Uh, Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed heads uh, all of the development program work and uh, leads the sustainable development goals. Amina, I don't know if you can hear me. I can hear you, Jeff. Thank Good. you very much. All right, excellent. Well, you have a, a room of very dedicated people. There have been hundreds of people throughout the day uh, listening. Uh, we, we had the uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand. We had the Crown Prince of Norway. We've had superb panels on uh, energy, uh, information technology, health care. Everybody's revved up and uh, waiting for your wise words. So thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you very much, Jeff. I'm not sure at this stage of the day what wise words I'm going to have to share with you, but I'm going to try. I, I loved hearing the end of the technology discussion which is very much about what the SG is doing on, on the panel that he has. And um, there's been so much discussion in the UN this week about, about the, the, um, the necessity for us to really embrace that, but to make sure that we're taking everyone with us and, and using it as a tool and applying it to this amazing framework that we have, um, all the SDGs. So let me first start by congratulating all of you and thank you, Earth Institute. Thank you, our Center for Sustainable Development at Columbia. And of course, the, the Global Masters Program uh, Development Practice. Uh, and then SDSN, which has really, from the very beginning, helped us to shape um, the, the depth and the ambition um, in our discussions of what we ended up with um, when you see not just the goals, it's the targets um, and the indicators behind everything in the 2030 agenda. We um, owe much to, to Jeff and his team at the SDSN, um, particularly the members of SDSN. And, and as, it, as it expands, um, this is what we need to see, um, the partnerships to do that. Um, I, I saw the title you had here was, you know, talking about the silos and sustainable development. I think one of the biggest challenges that we've had um, is that uh, as we got the 17 goals, people sort of wanted to quickly shift from eight to 17. And the, the question was, oh, there is all so many. So I know that um, with Jeff and team, we've been trying to create the new narrative so that we see the goals as um, these guiding stars um, to, to what we need to do country by country. But to say that the paradigm shift really has been about how we embrace the whole of development in a country with its economy at the center of it, making sure it's inclusive and using everything that is available in terms of opportunities um, today in the world. Uh, globalizations are here to stay. It may not be very just right now, uh, but we can make it with um, we can make it so with this framework. Um, if I put in context a little bit of the challenge we have um, for uh, for breaking the silos on the SDGs. The MDGs themselves, I think, you know, galvanized us all to do a lot on health and education um, and on, on uh, water, but uh, it, it really didn't get, to, it didn't get to what we needed to do to, to make the changes in the economy, consider the environment in a very serious way. Now, climate change is very real for us, um, and as the Secretary General says, we're not running fast enough. It's running faster than we are. Um, but we also, you know, have got very much engaged in this institutions that need to carry it and the partnerships that we see from the room that you're all in um, to the United Nations uh, today over the past few days and, and the many other um, players outside of both rooms. Um, this week, we've spent a great deal of time uh, speaking about health, uh, TB, NCDs, um, we spoke uh, late, earlier late, and universal health coverage. And then on the other side of it, we spoke about climate change. Um, and then we spoke about, uh, in some cases, uh, the, the case of early child marriage. Now, that's, that's a number of issues to put on the table all in a couple of days. Um, and that doesn't include the political discussions that are going on in other corridors. But what it does say is that as we discuss them in these individual rooms, how do we make the connections as we get down to the ground to ensure that um, 
what is really happening in a government is that they're speaking about all of these things, different levels of priority applied to them. More often than not, um, there is uh, choiceless choices being made. People talk about trade-offs. Actually, it's about choiceless choices that shouldn't have to happen um, in a cabinet. Um, in a meeting of a president and their ministers, they shouldn't have to say whether it is we do health or we do education or we do water or we do infrastructure, we should be doing the lot. So how do we present um, one response to that? And I think here um, with the UN, one of the uh, challenges that we face now is how do we help countries uh, to come around a framework uh, like the uh, Agenda 2030 and to help countries with their plans make sure they're being responsive to it. Um, so a, a number of considerations that, that, um, that we come to. Context is going to be very important. Let's not imagine that um, we're implementing the SDGs in a vacuum. Every country and region um, has a context in which we have to deal with. In some cases, extreme poverty rates, and we're dealing with incredibly poor institutions, um, weak governance. Um, in other cases, there are major issues around humanitarian crises, that could come out of a conflict or could come out of climate change. Um, but these do put a lot of burden on domestic resources, um, also create a distortion um, in the development, in the development uh, sector itself. Um, and, and then we, we are creating responses that, again, tend to silo themselves. So it, it really is a, um, quite complex. It is what is going to be key is how we bring um, our leadership together in the various um, aspects and constituencies to respond to this. Um, and so it's great to see that in this meeting that we are not just hearing from global leaders, but scientists, the private sector, um, civil society, and in particular, I would say young people, particularly students. Um, when I was um, privileged enough to be at Columbia, it was about what we do in terms of policy, but take it to practice. And I think that what SDSN has been able to do is, is do that 360 degrees and say, well, you know, the practice, this is what's happening in many of the initiatives that we have and how we need to feed it back into a response. So context will be key to, to what we are seeing today. We also met this week um, to address how we would um, you know, fund the 2030 agenda. Financing is a big part of it, and um, the financing that we see available to us um, is constrained by all sorts of barriers. Um, but as Jeff often says to us, there's enough money in this world, it's a question of them just putting it in the right place at the right time, which usually means with Jeff yesterday. Um, and I think that that's important. Um, the discussions we had this uh, week we're about the frameworks, um, uh, the architecture, the financial architecture, about investing at the country level and using technology, fintech, to make sure that everyone had access to it. I think a particular note is really understanding that there are huge gaps, and these gaps will not just be filled um, uh, automatically from ODA, which is insufficient, nor will they be um, filled from the private sector who doesn't feel that they've got sufficient there to, to, to see an enabling environment to invest in. It will require everyone to come together, look at the gaps and look at how, uh, what solutions that we can find um, from the IMF, the bank, the private sector, the UN itself, and many of the players in the room. So in a, in a nutshell, I would say that, you know, we do have all the stars aligned. It is about us getting out there to, to make sure that we pull the threads together on the sustainable development agenda to see every opportunity, as you had in your discussion on technology, how that supports sustainable development and that it's not about a quick fix, that a lot of this is about over time. How can we sow some of those seeds? There is urgency in some cases. Some countries we can leapfrog. In others, we can't. And I think we need to take careful consideration of that to make sure that those skill sets are there so that when we visit on countries, the technology that we have, um, the expertise that is coming, that there is a receiving audience that can understand that and can run uh, with us um, um, on trying to achieve the SDGs. Um, it's, been, uh, it's been a very exciting week at the UN. I'll just end on saying that um, the message that we really have right now 
As we speak to Agenda 2030 and the SDGs, the context that we worry about is that this ambitious historic agenda was done in the spirit of multilateralism. It was done underscoring that the solutions that we need to the vast challenges we have in a universal agenda cannot be done by any one individual, company, country, entity alone. It really does us, needs us to, to join hands together and get it done. And that's the message that we're reinforcing this week in the UN. In your um, uh, discussions that you have, uh, you're already emulating in a room how much synergy there is there and cooperation and collaboration can take us very far. So my ask of you would be, that's what you need to take outside of the room as you leave, is that we really need to stand up and do this together. In the outside world, not a very good environment for doing things together. But we can assure you that taking the reality, looking at our aspirations, closing that gap needs us doing this together. That's the way we'll get it done. And that's the way we'll deliver on the SDGs. Thank you very much for having time to listen to me oh, this evening. Oh. Thank you. Those were uh, indeed uh, wonderful words of wisdom, and we're really grateful. We know how incredibly busy you are, but we heard a full agenda, and uh, I know that, uh, Amina, when you said uh, young people uh, are needed, everyone was nodding their heads in the room. So you've got them. The Army uh, uh, for the SDGs Great. is here, uh, and uh, count, count on us for the support, and thank you for your leadership. Everyone is uh, thank you very greatly much. Thank appreciative. You. Thanks a lot. Thank you.